These are the stories. There is a foundation out there that helps you get back into it. Of organizations making a difference. What really limits our ability to do something is people's imagination. And empowering others across Canada. When I get into that sledge, I'm free, man. I'm playing hockey. It's a great organization and it's worth supporting. In our community. This is the annual Different is Beautiful photo shoot, a place where children of all abilities come to dance and play and get their photos taken. Whether they use a wheelchair, a walker, or leg braces, everyone is welcome. Oh my gosh, give me that big smile again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Amazing, Jillian. Oh the photos created by this session will be used in this year's Different is Beautiful calendar, which helps to spread the message of inclusion across Canada. Tara McCallan, the creator, and her seven-year-old daughter, Pip, are getting their chance in the spotlight. Since Pip was born with Down syndrome and multiple other differences, she's been a force for change in her mother's life. Oh, yeah. I think there's this misconception um, around differences and around disabilities that they're deemed as broken or wrong. Um, and my little girl proves that to me every day that that's not the case. Hi, babies. Back at home, as her kids get off the school bus, Tara now juggles caring for her daughter Pip and two sons, Noel and Theo. Yeah. Nice. Can you say bye, Afi? Bye. Oh. Hi! Come on, big girl! Pippi, come on! <laughs> My little girl came, um, like I said, in with such a whirlwind approach, but I guess that's how she was meant to be because um, from day one she changed me, from day one she changed literally everyone in the room around her. Boots on the train, back back, let's go! And she continually, daily, um, blows my mind with the purpose she has in her life. You want to give me your bag? I missed you too. How was your day? Okay. Take off your boots. For Tara and her husband Craig, it hasn't been an easy road to get here. Take them off. You're welcome. The first day or so when Pip was born, um, everything was what the doctor considered uh, typical. Soon after birth, a heart specialist revealed that Pip not only had a heart murmur, but other serious differences as well. I can remember this man's eyes. Um, they're just like burned into my memory, but he looked at me as he was kind of like looking at her little heart and she was just so tiny. And he looked at me with these sad, sad, sad eyes. And he just told me he was really sorry, um, but he saw signs that my daughter had Down syndrome. I've never been slapped in the face, but it physically felt like he slapped me across the face. It just came out of nowhere. I had no um, idea what he was even talking about. And everything kind of just crashed after that. The unexpected diagnosis hit Tara hard. So many elements came into play when our little girl was first born. Um, but a really important part for me and a really important part to share um, to other moms and other parents when they're faced with, um, you know, learning that their child has a difference is it's okay to grieve. Um, I felt for a really long time really guilty about being sad, you know, I would look at her and I had this beautiful baby and I didn't want her to feel the sadness that I was radiating because I really, um, I really, really grieved her diagnosis. I really had to um, take the time to digest it and learn what it meant for her and learn what it meant for our family. And I think that that's okay. Ready? One, two, three. Let me. We're gonna do blood sugar. I had body. Okay, what's the number? 13.5. Good job. It's hard for me seven years later to think back to that grief because we're in such a different place. Thank you. But even now, seven years later, there's moments um, where her disability or her difference still kind of tinges, um, where she's left out or she's made fun of, or there's going to be moments along our journey where I'm allowed to still grieve. 
Um, and I think parents need to know that that's okay. How do you write your name? P I P P Y. P P Y. Can you write that? During her initial grieving, Tara hit a particularly low point that eventually led her in an unexpected direction in life. She was just a couple days old and it was all just such a big whirlwind and I was putting her in her room and just a few days before she was born I had painted her this sign um, that said life is more beautiful because you are here. I was about to put her down in her crib and I looked up and I saw that sign and I don't know, for some reason that sign just took me to my knees and I put her in her crib and I just fell to the ground. When she got up, Tara went to her computer and opened the mommy blog she had started when her first son Noel was born. For some reason I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna share my thoughts on that. I have no idea if it took me four minutes or four hours. I just cried my eyes out, the whole keyboard was covered wet um, from my tears and I just remember the only thing that was crystal clear to me is before I hit publish, I thought, my life has changed, everything has changed, but who I am has to remain the same for my children. No matter what happens with this little girl, no matter what surgeries, what other diagnosis come our way, I have to remain happy regardless. And I went back to the title of the entire blog and I changed it to The Happy Soul Project hit publish, went to bed, didn't think anything of it, woke up and the whole thing had gone like freaking viral. Who can shake their bum the quickest? Shake your booty, go! <laughs> I think Pippi won, uh oh. That one blog changed my life for some reason. And you know, whether that's Pip's purpose in life or me finally finding my purpose. I'm not sure. I think I try to be as authentic as possible along this way. I don't sugarcoat things. My life is extremely hard um, having a child with special needs. Some days are really, um, really unbearable. And, you know, I find myself crying in the pantry um, at the unfairness of some things that I have to deal with with my little girl. But then there's other days when I look at what we've created, what Happy Soul Project has become from the blog, and I'm just blown away. It is my therapy 150%. I wrote that um, as a narrative from a mom's heart. I wrote that in my most real, raw, um, state and I still do. If you really look at Happy Soul Project, it really is um, the core and essence of it is just a mom's perspective on this journey. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. After that first blog post, Tara quickly gained a following of loyal fans who wanted to help her turn her vision into a reality. Today, she's the founder of the Happy Soul Project charity, which runs multiple campaigns and events. The Happy Soul Project became a nonprofit um, a year or two after it started going, just because I really wanted um, to find a way to help other people. At the beginning, Tara focused a large portion of her time on giving talks to students of all ages. All I'm going to be talking to you guys about today is just five key notes on how to have a happy soul. Um, that's literally what my... I gave a lot of talks at universities, especially here at Queen's, um, to future doctors and future teachers and future, you know, physiotherapists and a part of me also you know, was looking at this audience being like, how can I get them um, to do something good for their community and for their world? As more and more university students expressed an interest in helping the Happy Soul Project, the idea of university clubs was born. Today, the University of Toronto chapter is setting up obstacle courses, wheelchair games, and other activities for their first ever event in their gymnasium. Currently we have three clubs across Ontario um, and next year we'll be opening five more. 
and it's just these amazing pockets of students that you know are doing cool things for their community, fundraising for Happy Soul Project, um, and doing something that they hopefully um, will remember in life. Okay, could you and these two go upstairs and meet Tara to get the um, calendars? Yeah, is she almost here? Yeah, she said two minutes. After following Tara online for years, event organizer and U of T club president Megan James was finally inspired to reach out over social media. I was following her account um, and then once I got to U of T, I was kind of like, something's missing here, we don't have anything like this. I knew Happy Soul Project had a Queens Club in Kingston, um, so I reached out to her on Instagram, I emailed her, like we had like a Skype call, a little interview, and we thought it would be a good fit, so I started this in February of 2019. We need to move like the riser tables like around here. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I do a lot of this work but from a research perspective so I do a lot of work in adaptive physical activity, child and youth development, physical activity um, and what I was kind of missing was the part of doing the events and like promoting it to the community and I feel like there's still a, quite a gap between what we research behind the scenes and what's actually put into practice. Should we put them over there then that they like get them with every yeah. kind of care? Today's event is the result of months and months of work for Megan and the club's members. Today we're doing an inclusive play day in celebration of the launch of the Different is Beautiful and Dear Everybody calendar um, that we did back in May. This year our club just started and we were asked to kind of take on the calendar and help out. Um, so in celebration of the launch we thought it'd be perfect to have a play day given that our club's focus is on inclusive physical activity and sports. Yes! Amazing! As children arrive to take part in multiple activities ranging from wheelchair basketball to soccer and bocce ball to dancing, Megan hopes the inclusive nature of the games will have far-reaching effects. There you go. There you go. We would love to bring kids together of all abilities and show them that you can all play basketball. Some of you might be in a wheelchair, some of you may not, but like, look at these games you can play together. Ready? Go! A big part of inclusion is showing kids that just because you are different doesn't mean you can't all play together. For Tara, getting more and more university students on board with her message of inclusion is a key step in creating a better future. These are the students that are going to become the teachers, the doctors, the physiotherapists. These are the people that are going to be working with kids like my daughter. Um, and I think it's tone from the top, right? The more you invest that message into them, the more they're gonna live it and breathe it and invest it into the next generation. So that's, that's my mindset in helping and working with these students. While the play day provides fun activities for kids, the big show is the unveiling of the different is beautiful calendar photos. The pictures have been blown up and displayed on a photo wall for all to see. Where are you? Oh. Can you find them? Today is like a launch party where the kids haven't seen the calendar yet. They're coming for the first time and they get to see like a big blown up version of themselves. We're going to have a big um, video launch party about it. We're just excited. It's nice to like look around and see the kids beside their photo and come and pick it out and just be excited and celebrate who they are. I want to smile like that picture. Thank you. <laughs> Our University of Toronto Club really took our Different is Beautiful calendar project this year and really made it extraordinary. For photographer Lauren Houston, the long photo shoot was worth the effort. The kids were so awesome and it was so fun to see them light up in front of the camera. I remember how each kid was in front of the camera and a lot of them just kind of like walked on and started striking poses like I didn't have to do anything. So I love all of them. <laughs> Ready? Cheese! Hey, ready? If you could see the parents watching their children, it tears you down. The pride oozes out of them, and it's so humbling that I get to be the person that gets to see it and gets to provide it in like the smallest way. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Hit it right, hit it right, hit it right. Hit it right. At the 
the University of Toronto's Happy Soul Project Play Day, this year's Different is Beautiful calendar is being unveiled, featuring kids exclusively from the Holland Bloorview Kids Rehabilitation Hospital in Toronto. It was the U of T Club who reached out to Holland Bloorview, and Christine Hill, the hospital's Officer of Community Giving, couldn't be happier. I was so happy they reached out to us because I've been following Happy Soul Project from the beginning because I'm also a parent of kids with disabilities and I felt like I knew who Tara was and what she was going through. So I've been reading and sharing her stuff for seven years, so it's a bit of a super fan. <laughs> the hospital runs its own social justice campaign called Dear Everybody, which spreads messages of inclusion and celebration of differences written by the kids themselves. Its goal is to break down the stigma surrounding disability. It was born out of statements that we collected from our kids where uh, they let us know what they want everybody to know about them, about kids and youth with disabilities. So phrases like, if everybody can't be included in a game, we're not playing it right. Or it's time to celebrate our differences. And it just so quickly gained this momentum and we realized just how powerful this was. And I mean, it's gone global. You know, we're, we're seeing our Dear Everybody messaging all over the world, which is amazing. <laughs> Now in its third year, the Dear Everybody campaign is turning its focus towards the issue of fair representation in the media with a series of commercials that ask people to consider images they don't often see. Dear teacher, I don't do it the way everyone else does, but I can still do it. Dear other mom, we deserve to be here too. Dear doctor, you don't need to work on me. I am not broken. Dear kid, I know my prosthetic arm is cool, but staring isn't. Dear superheroes, why don't any of you look like us? Dear everybody. 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 And the stigma. 22% of Canadians have a disability. So one in five people we see out there in the media should have a disability. It only makes sense. I have four kids with disabilities myself, and when they do see an image that includes somebody more like them, it really helps them to find their place in the world, in our country. It's, it's good stuff. This lack of media representation was what sparked Tara's imagination in the first place. I remember going home and like looking through magazines and looking through advertising and not seeing representation of my daughter in any way. Um, and that really lit a fire under me. I wanted her to be able to grab a magazine and, you know, see herself or see somebody in a wheelchair or somebody with one arm or somebody with glasses. I just, it was such a big thing for me at that moment to see differences represented. That initial inspiration eventually turned into the Different is Beautiful calendar. Seven years later, Tara is still blown away by the positive experience the calendar and photo shoot create. Sometimes the fear of what she has is almost, um, could choke you, it's, it's overwhelming. And when you have the ability to give somebody this opportunity where they can shove all that aside and shout from the rooftop that this difference is awesome and it can bring awareness and it can help somebody, um, it's a pretty cool thing. Today's event not only features the photo wall, but also speeches and a behind the scenes video presentation of the photo shoot. <laughs> First, you'll hear from Andrea, who runs the blog, the blog Mom Behind the Label, and I'm sure some of you already know her, but she's going to be speaking about a little bit about what she does, and so I'm going to pass the mic over to Andrea now. Thank you. When Megan reached out to me to be part of the play day today, um, it was just such a natural connection for what I believe in as a mother, advocate, and an educator, that um, all kids, no matter where you come from, what physical activity you enjoy, that there's a place for you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Andrea Hayflay and I am part of the Bloorview family. My daughter Bella is sitting right there in the middle of the room. She is a Bloorview ambassador. She was born with multiple disabilities ranging from um, autism, Pitt Hopkins syndrome, and also a visual impairment. The whole concept of different is beautiful is that being different is accepted. 
that it is normal, that whether you are speaking another language, talking from an iPad, using pictures to communicate, um, playing differently, looking differently, that we're all celebrated for who we are. Um, one of the biggest challenges as a parent advocating for my daughter is proving our worth. I feel like I'm always pushing to shout and scream that my daughter is worthy of just being around people and her friends and in the education system. And I think Tara's whole push and advocacy with Different is Beautiful is that no matter who you are, whether you have a disability or not, that you are worthy of being part of the whole. Bringing people together and helping other parents in similar situations has always been Tara's goal. The core value of, of Happy Soul Project is completely about inclusion, um, no matter the difference or the disability or whatever it means. Um, it's about being yourself, it's about being authentic and being genuine. Next you're going to hear from our founder Tara who's like running, you don't have to run, it's okay, we'll be patient. <laughs> I think as a mom, um, you know, take my role in the nonprofit out of it, just look at it from a mom's perspective. I think if I can leave this world and this place a little bit better and a little bit easier for the next mom in my scenario, um, that's a really great thing. We are so excited to have everybody here. It is such a, um, I can't even really explain the emotion I feel behind this. For Tara, it's amazing to see how much has been built from a single blog post. It was a blog, it was this moment, this vulnerability, this moment in my life where I just needed to share something and it's turned into this big beautiful community that's putting so much good in the world. Um, it's something I'm really proud of. I'm almost living this like unbelievable dream of I get to create an idea of how to help people or how to add inclusion somewhere or how to make a kid feel like a rock star and I have this platform and community of people that are like cool let's do that and I don't know how I got here and I don't know why but I'm so humbled and so thankful for the opportunity. In the end it's Pip who pushes her to strive for a better future. No, I take you. At the heart of it, I'm a mom, right? And I'm, I'm really trying to make um, the world better for my daughter. My little girl's purpose has been spilling over her life into mine. And for some reason, I've been given this platform and this loud voice and the community behind me makes it that much louder. I wish I could take the mom I was those first few days crying about my little girl and then show that same mom the purpose that that child has. Because, I don't know, this little girl, she's something special, I tell ya. <laughs> something so special. Um, the fact that she's changing lives and not even knowing it just by being herself, um, it's a pretty, pretty amazing thing to witness. Precious baby. You know, I've learned along this way that a diagnosis or a doctor can't predict the love that you're going to have for your child. Um, who they are is who they are. The difference or the disability is just a layer, absolutely, but PIP isn't Down syndrome. PIP isn't type 1 diabetes. PIP is PIP. Um, and you know, she teaches me that every day. Produced and directed by Tim Alp. Writer story editor Maureen Carter. Additional writing Tim Alp. Narrator Jim Van Horn. Director of photography Stefan Shemansky, Mike Teen. Camera operator Tim Alp. Additional camera Garth Jackson. Production manager Gail Nakamoto. Production assistant Mason Alp. Location audio Mason Alp. Editor Tracy Basinas. Assistant editor Corinne Martin. Integrated described video specialist Ron Rickford. Regional content specialist Karen McGee. Coordinating producer Jennifer Johnson. Consulting producer Colette Vosper. Director production Karen I. Director programming Brian Perdue. VP programming and production John Melville. President and CEO David Arrington. Produced with the participation of the Canada Media Fund. Produced by Mountain Road Productions. Copyright 2020 Accessible Media Inc.